Hey guys, my name is Shai. In this pick a card reading, we're going to look at your shadow self versus your higher self. You can think of that as as above, so below. I've got two different decks in each of these piles. This black and gold deck is going to be representing your shadow energies or kind of your darker subconscious energies that might be a little traumatized or might be fear based. And those are the things you're going to be wanting to kind of look at and let go of. And the other deck at the back is going to be your higher self or your more transcendent energies. And those are the things you're going to be wanting to leaning into in order to grow and evolve your consciousness. So it's just piles one, two, three, and number four. And I'll see you when you're reading. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. In your guys' shadow position, you have page of wands, Seven of Swords, and Page of Swords. So this gives me a little bit of like an adolescent vibe, uh, like a little bit of immaturity, head in the sand, kind of trying to avoid, I feel like you're trying to avoid looking at your your shadow, you're try, trying to avoid looking at your subconscious. I think you guys know what you need to look at, what you need to shine some light on, but you're just like avoiding it. You're just avoiding it. <laughs> and because of the seven of swords, you're trying to get away with something. This is always a little bit sneaky. A little bit sneaky here. Um, I don't really see the seven of swords as like a lot of deception energy like maybe most readers do. Uh, I see this as you're trying to get away with something. And since this is surrounded by two pages, I think you're trying to get away, like you're trying to get away with just not looking at it. Like, I feel like you guys are charging ahead and you don't want to think about things. Um, which, I mean, as far as shadow energies go, like, I know you might be thinking, oh, yeah, you know, she just called me, like, childish and immature. But, it, yeah, as far as shadow energies go, that is, like, really light, actually. Um, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't, like, a bad spread for your shadow. It just really reminds me of how, you know, when we're teenagers, we all do that thing where we just avoid looking at anything bad. We just avoid it. We just charge ahead. That's what you guys are doing. And especially with these two swords, it's really like a mental, a mental energy and a little bit of like passion, almost like willful ignorance. So obviously in order to evolve and to raise your consciousness, you want to be looking at what is unpleasant for you. On top of this seven of swords, we have a five of cups. This is a really profound five of cups to me because look at this like cavern. I feel like that this tension and conflict and pain in this five of cups is really born of like deep, pressurized energies so although this is in your higher self position i think this is saying that you need to address the conflict and like the division the divide deep within yourself and it's sitting right on top of the seven of swords so it makes me think you're avoiding looking at it especially since we have this kind of negative card in the higher self position maybe you guys are being called you're being called up, like you're being called to step up, you're being called to evolve, you're being called to take on more responsibility, um, and just being called to grow and to do more. Like it's time for you guys to step up, but I think the stepping up process is slightly <laughs> unpleasant for you guys, to say the least, because you are avoiding looking inside of yourself. You got to look inside of yourself and find what's there. Whatever you're worrying about, whatever you are, something about your, your inner self, these pages, there's something about your inner child, maybe something about your childhood. If there, guys, if there was some kind of trauma in your childhood that you just tend to not think about, that you just <laughs> like, oh, that never happened, just charge ahead. <laughs> uh, it might be time to look at that. Of course, don't go like digging up these traumatic memories if like until you're ready. Right? We don't need to be like compulsively looking at our shadow, compulsively digging up every horrible thing that's ever happened to us and processing it, you know, process them as they come up. But to me, this is a sign that, you know, something I, really about your childhood is probably coming up for you. And that's an invitation to look at it. You know, we don't, 
think about a knight like a knight errant, right? A knight wouldn't go around like looking for dragons to slay, at least not a smart one, right? You'd only slay the dragons that are directly in your path. So there is some kind of trauma from your past that is currently sitting in your path, blocking your way, causing all of this tension, almost like almost like an, an earthquake kind of feeling. Uh, like, you know, imagine the tectonic plates coming together and they can't move, so they're going to start pushing on each other and rippling out an earthquake. That, that, like, block, that pressure there needs to be addressed and released in order to, to move on up. Yeah, and as I was saying, you guys, I, I, I think you're being called to step up to something. Uh, really, it's, it's spiritual journey because over here, Eight of Cups spiritual journey. You guys know that this is your time to be looking at your spirituality. You guys are having an awakening and you're just starting, but I feel like you're just kind of, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of awakenings you've gone through in the past. If you're already like super awake, this is just a sign that it is like, it's stepping up. There's a new phase of your journey beginning this eight of cups, always the spiritual journey, looking out into the, into the cosmos and being ready to like follow the call. And this three of cups, yeah, the moon is like downloading energy into this healing pyramid. Um, you know, the three of cups is always that like it, it. I think of it as almost like the coven card. It's your soul family. It's your your happiness. It is your. Having a wonderful, good time, like healing with the people you love. So that's definitely here because it is three of cups. But this particular three of cups I really see it as like cosmic downloads. Like imagine that you're in this pyramid getting this heat, like beams of healing energy from the moon. Wow, actually, uh, obvious. this is obvious, but I just noticed it now. All three of your higher row, your higher self, they're all cups. There's no cups on the bottom. In fact, you have thoughts and like impul impulses on the bottom. So for you guys to let this crap from the past go and lean into your spiritual journey and your evolution, you are absolutely being invited to tune into everything represented by the cups, your emotions, your right brain, your femininity, your love, your ability to flow with the universe. Because in the past, you've been controlling, you've been trying to, well, not so much that you've been controlling, but you've been like dodging, you've been working the system, you've been working the game You've been getting away with shit, <laughs> not necessarily in a really bad way, but just, you know, dodging bullets and going really been walking your like carving your own path, which isn't bad. But I think right now you're really being asked to like stop dodging, stop sticking your head in the sand. You need to like get yourself into the current, like get, get in your boat, get on the river and go with the current. This is not the time to be fighting the flow. You guys need to be getting in flow because your ultimate card here is really this eight of cups. This is you are being called to go on your spiritual journey, to walk your path. And really, once you go through this eight of cups, it's just onwards and upwards from there. I love this card. And it always comes up for people starting a new phase of their spiritual path. I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. I hope you don't have to dig up too much traumatic shit from your past, but there's definitely a like loving, hopeful, transcendent trajectory for you to lean into here. So good luck with that. Hope to see you guys again soon. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. Your guys' cards are very interesting. You have three major arcana, two queens of pentacles right on top of each other, and the Ten of Wands. The first thing I think here is that your guys' shadow isn't really that dark. You know, you've got the Hierophant, the Hermit, and the Queen of Pentacles. But the interesting thing about this Queen of Pentacles is you also have the Queen of Pentacles, or in this deck, it's the Queen of Crystals, up here. So there's obviously not a, like, something about you is going to be, is already evolved to where it's supposed to be, at least for now, and doesn't really need to change. Um, there's going to be a qualitative change in how you manifest this Queen of Pentacles, energy like like this is the queen of pentacles in your shadow obviously it's this black card with these golden stripes and 
She's kind of isolated in this sparse garden, but you know, she's still the queen of pentacles, right? She is still the master of her home and the master of her environment in a rather introverted way. Queen of pentacles is kind of introverted to me, but you know, she is sovereign in her own self. So how does that need to transmute in order to become this queen of crystals? Uh, first of all, obvious, the obvious change is that this is pentacles talking about money, essentially, right? That these pentacles in these decks are, are money, they're coins. Queen of crystals. And this deck uses crystals instead of pentacles because it symbolizes not just money, not just this, like, not just coins, not just gold, right? But the actual, like, earth energy, like, connecting with the whole earth. So I think... Yourself as the Queen of Pentacles just needs to become like more enriched and more expanded. Where before, if you focused mainly on like more material things like money, your physical home, and like security, you're going to be kind of keeping that, keeping what you learned, but expanding it to include more of like connecting with nature, connecting maybe literally with crystals. Like, I see, like, your environment, like, expanding out, rippling out. And I think you'll be kind of a, a queen of a larger, a larger enterprise, a larger networked systems. And it's like, you're not going anywhere. Like, you're not changing yourself entirely. You're just leveling up and expanding. You're going to be a more enlightened queen. I would say this queen of crystals is like a more enlightened version of this queen of pentacles. And she lives in a world of, you know, beautiful color, holding the holding this globe in her hands with this tiger next to her, right? So this is this is really cool. This is really interesting. You're just becoming a more enlightened version of yourself because you already have this solid foundation as the Queen of Pentacles. As above, so below applies so so perfectly here. What else we have going on over here? We have the Hierophant. On top of that, the Queen of uh, the Ten of Wands. You have been working inside of some kind of tradition, some kind of hierarchy, and I think that if you've been in inside of a tradition, I mean, this can be a religion, this can be like a kind of family with a really kind of specific hierarchical structure to it. If you think like more traditional structures and families, uh, this can be school, this can be career. Any kind of like ladder system that you've been navigating, I think you are like reaching the end of that, of its usefulness, right? Structures, hierarchies, forms, traditions, all of that is useful only so long as it is useful, right? As soon as you're done with like, as soon as you, you have explored that system, as far as it can be explored, you want to put that burden down and you want to evolve because it's sitting on the Ten of Wands. I feel like you... This is a sign of both you're harvesting everything you're going to harvest out of this system. It's like, it's done. It is time to put that burden down. You know, you're reaping your harvest and then you put the burden down. And then it's going to be, you know, winter because the harvest is in and you're going to be going through a little bit of period of kind of hibernation. And then you're going to be finding either a new system that is more aligned with your more evolved self. Or maybe you will be finding like no system. You don't need to be in a system. But yeah, whatever system or tradition this Hierophant is reflecting for you, it's time to let that go. Also, I'm really seeing with this something I've been thinking a lot about. As you can see, this is, you know, has this Pope figure with these two little little people bowing, you know, receiving benediction from him or instruction. And so representative of this master apprentice paradigm that we've been going through for like at least 5,000 years, if not longer. Everything, like right now, we we learn everything through Master Apprentice, but that has been shifting, shifting, shifting so fast over the past 10 years, really 100 years, but you know, it's, it's slowly starting, starting. Uh, I really feel like one of the things that's going to be changing a lot in this age of Aquarius is we're putting to rest this Master Apprentice paradigm, okay? So no longer is like learning and instruction going to take place in strict hierarchies. Just think of the education system. Just think of, you know, professors and students. Going forward, more and more, we're going to be doing this like decentralized, like network, like Aquarius style learning, you know, where you go online and you are your own teacher. You are your own master. You don't need 
you know, to have a teacher or a professor or this specific expert figure leading you down your path. You can find your own path and you can teach yourself. And we're going to be doing a lot, lot more like peer teaching, kind of exactly what we do on YouTube with tarot videos, right? Uh, people who know a little bit about tarot or, you know, maybe more than a little bit, but who, who have reached a certain level of skill with tarot, come on YouTube, make some videos, and then all of their peers watch it. It's not like me or anybody else is like some like tarot master and only we get to make videos. No, we, it's like, we're all pooling our, our insights, our thoughts, our energies together. And then everybody just takes and like learns from it as is appropriate to them. Right. The internet is so good at that. Every, everybody has something to teach and everybody has something to learn. And we get to learn from our peers. Of course, there is still space for experts and specialists. Like we wouldn't want to do away with specialists, right? Then who would fix our car? Who would fix our computer? Who would do brain surgery on us, right? We still need experts, but I don't think they're going to be, they're only going to be held, put on a pedestal inside of their specialty, right? We'll still respect specialists for doing what they can do and they deserve their respect, right? We all need specialists, but it's like, if you're a like professor of biology, that is only relevant inside of biology, right? You might be this professor, this guy with a PhD who publishes all these like, you know, amazing biology papers. But if you can't like unclog your toilet and you need to call a plumber, well, <laughs> as you can see, we need all kinds of specialists and we all need to be helping each other. So a little bit of a tangent there, but that that is relevant to this. Put aside the master apprentice paradigm and you're going to be putting that burden down and going more into like peer networking and learning. Yeah. And inside this network of peers that you're cultivating, you have been this hermit figure, right? You have been going within, you've probably been pretty introverted. You've been go. The, the hermit card is beautiful to me. It's one of my favorite cards. You have been gone within and you've been cultivating your inner light. You have, all of the power that you need all within inside, inside of you and you know it. You have cultivated your inner power, but I think you are being called to step out into the world and share your light because on top of this is the emperor and you've got the emperor next to the queen of pentacles in your higher self position. So I think, yeah, <laughs> interesting, I went on that tangent about putting aside the master apprentice paradigm, but I think in in some way, you are going to be a master in your own in your own way. You have some you have some kind of specialty, some way that you have cultivated your inner light. Yeah, and I think it more just has to do with not necessarily any specific skill, although you can have a specific skill in whatever it is that you do, but you you need to shine your light forth with the emperor that is such a like it's a public figure, right? You're the most public figure. You're the emperor. It is time to step out and you might have to be in in the spotlight. As the hermit in your past, you don't necessarily like to be in the spotlight, but it is time to step up because you have cultivated such such like vibration that it's time to share that with people in whatever way is comfortable for you or I mean, isn't traumatic for you, right? You don't need to like, you know, go on Oprah and, you know, tell the world, but you need to be sharing it with somebody. It is time to step up and to step out into the public eye in a certain way and share share what you have learned, not as this master that is better than everybody else, but as a peer who has cultivated a specific quality of expertise about something. Go and share that with the world. And then, you know, you're just pooling your expertise into the network and you can continue to learn from everybody else while they can continue to learn from you. And I think that's what I'm seeing here, guys. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. The first thing I want to look at here is this Ten of Swords in your shadow position with this Five of Swords up top. Obviously, we don't want to see the Five of Swords in our higher self, in our above position, right? Because that is 
ego, it's entrapment, it's pain, it's conflict. Like that is not what we want to be <laughs> leaning into. So why is that there? Ten of Swords. It's right on top of this Ten of Swords. You need to go through some kind of ego death. I think since this Ten of Swords down here, it, this is trying to, it's trying to kill your ego. It's trying to bring some kind of cycle to the end. But since it's in your shadow position, I would take this to mean that like you're, you're avoiding this. You're not looking at it. It's something that's trying to happen, but hasn't quite manifested yet. And because of that, it's like really dragging your higher self down. It is dragging your potentials down. It's like your, your transcendent energies are being like contaminated by this five of swords. I mean, luckily, since it's like sitting on top of this ten of swords, I think this is just a matter of time before this, like before this comes to an end, the final death for this is coming. And that'll be really healing for your higher self. You'll be able to get rid of this like ego block, this like contamination of your ego. You, you know, you'll be able to stop feeling trapped and you'll, you'll be free. You'll absolutely be free. Um, and yeah, if you look also in your shadow energies, you have the six of swords, which is always that leaving a painful place behind something, something has to be left behind you have some kind of baggage. And I really think it has to do with your, your ego, your constructed sense of self. What is it about yourself that you are have constructed or that you are attached to that has been posed upon you by societal conditioning? By like karmic conditionings from your past or your past life. Something's got to go, guys. You need to identify what you need to put down and what you need to let die. And like to never go back to. This needs to be like done. Ten of swords. Done, done, done. Dead, dead, dead. Over. Something needs like serious, serious closure. Since the Queen of Cups is also down here. I mean, Queen of Cups is normally a pretty good, is a, normally a really nice card. But down here in your shadow, I almost see this as the shadow energies of the Queen of Cups is like that mother-in-law that everybody hates to have. The meddling mother-in-law, the one who's always up your ass about everything you do, narcissistic, is, you know, nothing you do is good enough. All, but at the same time, always trying to control you, trying to micromanage you, but never in a direct way, always in that sweet, syrupy, manipulative way. But underneath, it's knives and daggers and manipulation. Emotional manipulation and, like, narcissism at its worst. Well, maybe not its worst, but, you know, bad. <laughs> so, and I, I don't think, you know, that this is... I'm not saying you guys are horrible people and that you're some horrible mother-in-law. I'm saying that, you know, most of us have those tendencies like deep inside of us. And this probably comes out of you in like extreme moments of stress. Uh, when you feel like you just don't know how to navigate a situation, you might like default into this like lower level manipulation of your, of the people around you because you, you just, you can't figure out any other way to communicate. And you're just trying to be heard. You're only trying to be heard and you're trying to get your needs met and you're trying to find stability and security. It's just obviously, you know, not the healthiest way of going about it, but you know, that's fine. The purpose of this reading isn't to make anybody feel like shit because we like, we all have these problems that we need to look at, right? We're, we're all in the same boat. I mean, the boat has like different colors and stuff, <laughs> right? Different makes and models of the boat, but we're all in this, like, we all have these shadow energies. We've all got these boats to deal with. So just, you know, putting that out there. So some kind of controlling, emotionally manipulative tendencies need to be left behind. And if you can do that, you have all kinds of promising things coming for you in your future. Ace of Swords and Page of Cups. See how the Page of Cups is sitting right on top of the Queen of Cups? That's saying that, you know, this like, you know, mother-in-law from hell archetype is, has manifested, I think, as like a symptom of your fears and your traumas and your insecurities, which is understandable. But if you can just let go of all that baggage about it, then you'll, you'll like come back to yourself, come back to yourself as this page of cups, as this purely empathic, purely loving, compassionate, really innocent and freed creature. You know, she's your inner child and that's who you really are. This, this other person that you've become because of all this bullshit that's happened to you, all of the shit you've been through, that's not you. 
that's that's like just like ego structures that are like contaminating you right let them go let them die ten of swords ego death let them die and you can be reborn as the page of cups beautiful beautiful girl or you know whoever you are being beautiful beautiful being yes full of love unconditional love and also um the other you know new beginning you'll be having is ace of swords just a whole new paradigm whole new mental construct and wow that's actually really awesome to get the ace of swords uh along with this six of swords and ten of swords it's like you gotta leave behind you gotta leave it behind all this crap you gotta leave it behind and if you do so you'll be like completely turning a new leaf ace of swords right it's almost like ace high coming back everything will cycle around it this yeah yeah, Ace of Swords, Page of Cups. It's so cyclical. You'll be, I think there's, as long as you let this thing die, let this thing, let this horrible slug inside of you die, you know what it is, guys. You know what it is. Let that die and you will be coming back to a whole new fresh start. It's like you're getting a chance to like do over. There's a big reset button. You get to like reboot something about yourself here. That is really cool. Yeah, you guys, this Ten of Swords is a big giant reboot button. All you needed to do is like have the courage in order to do it. Let Say goodbye to that thing. Let it die. <sighs> okay, that was pretty concise. So I'm going to pull I'm gonna pull some cards for you. I don't know which ones yet. Let me uh, go through my drawer and find out. Okay, Starseed Oracle wanted to jump out for you guys. I think... No, go back in the deck. Wait, it's not time yet. Things are being woven. All right. This is a sign that whatever I was just talking about, um, like, look, you're looking through the portal. You see that this is all coming on. But I don't think this, this Ten of Swords, this Ego Death is going to be happening today. This is really cool. We're actually getting a, a timeline here. You have to wait, not because you're not doing anything, not because you're not exactly ready, but because this is already all happening. This, you're on your Six of Swords journey. This is all happening underneath the surface. Things are being woven. You're weaving this portal. You're getting something ready. It's almost like you're packing your bags getting, you know, your savings account together, arranging your travel plans, and you're about to go through some kind of portal. It's just, it's not quite time yet because you're still in the process of packing your bags, right? You can't get on the plane if you're still packing your bags. So hang in there, guys. I don't think this is going to be like a really long time, but I think this just means that, you know, your ego death, your, your big release and your big reset button isn't going to happen like today. Might be a few weeks, be a few months, but this is definitely like cooking. It's in the works. Okay. Called Soul Gifts and Training. It's time to step up. Yes. Okay. So this to me is when you guys finally get ready to go through your portal here, when it's finally time, when you when you go through your ego death and you have your, your reset and your rebirth. <laughs> now we know what happens to you next. You'll be stepping up. Oh, and here's the, here's the portal I was talking about. <laughs> yep, it's time to step up, guys. All of that crap that you need to leave behind from your past, from your shadow, it will just hold you back where you're going because you are meant for bigger or better things. You are called. I don't think I need to say anything else about that. You are being called. It's time. Just hang in there for just a little bit while you are weaving this portal for yourself because energetically it's all happening underneath the surface you're packing your bags getting ready to go so good luck guys hope to see you again soon hey pile four welcome to your reading you guys had a fourth card jump out for your shadow which is interesting seeing as you guys are going through a tower moment dun 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 Shit is hitting the fan. People are throwing themselves out of buildings and you are having a massive reset. Upheaval. You guys know. You guys know the tower card, right? <laughs> it's happening. 
Um, I hope you can kind of lean into this with, which is much, with as much enthusiasm as you can muster. Personally, I kind of get excited when I see the tower card now because after having gone through some really traumatic tower moments, I have, I, now I know. I don't have to just believe it because people say it. I know because I have lived it that after your tower moment, bam, everything is always <laughs> more on point. You just had to clear out that crap. You know, it's like the universe is like, okay, you know, time to reboot the system and start over because you are being leveled up. So the tower, you know, obviously you're in for some shit, but it's going to be good. It's going to be, you're going to be more than good in the long run. Um, yeah. Uh, for you guys, this is tower moment might like, it's really going to be rearranging your life in a way you don't appreciate at first because your shadow has a, Six of Wands, which is, you know, victory and triumph, and Ten of Cups, which is, you know, happiness, happy home, bliss, you know, nirvana, everything good. So, and this is what's, fl unfortunately, good things are flanking your tower. I'm sorry, guys. Um, there's going to be something, I, I feel like you guys have it pretty good, in at least in some respects, and it, some, some of that's going to have to go. And obviously over here, four of cups, you know, you're going to be feeling pretty sulky about this. You're, you're, Because, I mean, who who wants to see their ten of cups and their six of wands? Who wants to see their happiness and their triumph collapse in a tower? Nobody does. And you're going to be feeling like this about it. No. But, you know, this it's interesting that this four of cups came up because... This four of cups, you know, normally it's kind of like, oh, you know, someone is fixating on this one cup uh, in a negative way. But look, this one cup has these like r cosmic rays of light shining down on it. And every time I see this four of cups, I always feel like this, this cup, this one cup isn't the problem, right? This is a ray of light. This is your hope. This is your hope. Look at this. She's like, ah, you know, it's like the angels are singing on this one cup. So that gives me a major clue as to what's going on here in your, in your shadow. You might have 10 cups, but, and you might have to lose nine of them, but the one you're left with will be the one that is most important to you. You know, maybe something happens in your circle of friends and you lose all of your friends. I don't know, you know, what kind of situation could cause that but just as an example say you lose all of your friends but you find at the end of the day that one friend you have left is that is your soulmate that is the one friend you needed they they are all that you need those other people you might have had them but and they might have been good for you in the past but they're not for your future you don't need to take them with you they're baggage you don't need you know imagine your house burns down <laughs> everything you ever owned gone all of your possessions but when you're digging through the rubble you know the tower collapses you're digging through the rubble and you find like one like family photo album that has all of your you know favorite pictures in it you know really meaningful me memories from your 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 childhood stuff like that maybe people who've passed on it's like this photo album it's like that's the one thing the one thing that you uh that you have that you're able to retrieve from your burnt out home but that's enough because wow look at the memories you have in that and that gives you the strength to move forward so I'm really going to interpret this tower as you are going to be learning what is actually important, what is actually essential. There's a bunch of things in your life that you think you can't do without, but oh man, guys, you're going to find out that that it really wasn't as important as you think. And that is the major lesson you need to learn here. That, yeah, this is coming through really strongly. Uh, really, I'm really feeling this right now. You are totally being asked to figure out what is actually important to you. And the quicker you figure that out, the easier this will go for you. Um, like if you if you if you get up after watching this video and be like, okay, all I really need in life is this one thing, this one thing that is what is most important to me. You know, whether that's your dog, your boyfriend, your your internal consciousness, yourself. You guys might have to hit rock bottom to the point where you find that literally nothing else matters else matters because you have your you have your soul, you have your consciousness, you have your connection with the cosmos. You are all you need. Even if you have, even if your whole life falls apart, you can still go on striding strong because you have yourself. And what could you possibly need beyond that? This is going to play out in different ways for different people, obviously. 
So not everybody's going to have to like hit, hit, hit rock bottom where the, all they have is the shoes on their feet. But everybody is going to be learning a lesson about what is actually important. And as we move into your higher self, four of swords. So once the dust settles, guys, you're going to be going through a period of like rest and recovery. A little bit of a comatose state, you know, you're going to be a little bit like, whew, a little traumatized, but not, not like, not like permanently traumatized, but you know, you're going to have to be like, wow, you know, that was, that was a lot that just happened to me. And you're going to need some downtime to like integrate that. You're going to just need to sit and just be still and process what's happening to you because it's going to be, it's going to be a lot. And then you're going to be sitting here poised on the edge of this cliff going, Hey, okay. Okay. Now I see this is my new beginning. Look at this portal. She's going to jump into and the knight of swords is really quick and really reckless, but this Knight of Swords, she's waiting, she's waiting, she's thinking about it. So you're going to have like a little bit of a breath before the plunge. <laughs> Just think of standing on the edge of a, a cliff before jumping into like ice cold water, right? That's what you're going to be doing. But eventually you're going to drop, you're going to drop into this portal and you're going to be taking nothing with you. It looks like she's even leaving her sword behind. She's going in there just with herself. Yeah, whatever you guys, after the tower moment, whatever you're left with, whatever that like one thing is that is that you find is most important to you or that one thing that is really truly only important, the only true thing that is important, that's what you'll take with you into this portal. And happily, Empress. That's where this is all going, guys. When you're sitting here with your tower moment, when like, you know, your life is crumbling down around you, at least if it feels like your life is crumbling down around you. Just remember that the Empress, you are going to be the Empress. That is what this is all about. It is teaching you that, you know, you don't need to be like lower, lower evolutions of yourself. You don't need to be sitting in these lower frequencies. All of this is to propel you to become your greatest, highest potential. You're going to come out of this in the long run as the Empress, and you're going to be living your best, best life. What else does the Empress do? She lives her best life. She helps everybody else facilitate their best life. She is the evolution of all of the Queens. She channels cosmic energies down into the earth. She is a translation point between the cosmos and the, and the earth. Like guys to, to have the tower moment and then see the Empress, so you will be embodying Empress energy in your future. Just, just remember that guys. Cause that's where this is all going. Absolutely. And I think a couple of moon cards for you. <laughs> okay, so I was going in my drawer to get the moon cards, but I picked up the wrong box and I opened it and this card fell out. Jaguar. This Jaguar card is essentially the death card in tarot. It is all about cycles ending, being regenerated, going through massive transformations. The subtext here is release. He's like the Jaguar is like the Reaper come, come to reap your soul. But then also, you know, you will be reborn because you, you are going through this trans transformative ascension cycle. So I think this is the card you guys are meant to get. Absolutely. Cause put that there right next to the tower, the tower and death. The site, you know, a cycle is ending, but a new cycle is beginning, right? Every time a cycle ends, a new one is being born. And the topsy-turvy moment where everything is changing, you just got to keep your center throughout it. You guys will keep your feet. You absolutely will because you're going to be the empress. So I would actually, I will actually wish you guys congratulations on your tower and your, your death moment, because this is, you're going to be able to look back on this and be like, yes, yes, it was worth it. Yes. So just stay strong, find your inner strength because you're going to see yourself through this. You don't need anybody's help, but your own. You got this guys. You can do this. No matter what comes your way, you can do this. Hang in there guys. Remember that you will be the empress. <laughs> Bye.